Hey, what's going on, Coin Out TV subscribers? Robert Welkner here. In this video, I want to talk about Truth Be Told, episodes one, two, and three, which just dropped on Apple TV Plus. First off, uh, no spoilers in the beginning. We're going to talk some spoilers momentarily. Let me just give my brief reactions, my brief thoughts. I cannot believe how great the show is, or at least these first three episodes are. This could be the best Apple TV Plus show yet. And I, I just, I'm just, I was just very surprised when I was watching it because I actually saw some early reviews talking about the truth be told and saying like, well, it's got all these great stars, but it's, it doesn't really have good moments and it's not well written and it's kind of gimmicky. And I was watching it and my mouth was open. I was just like, who, who are these people? What did they see that I didn't see or, or reverse? What am I seeing that they didn't see? Because I was just all over the show. Every moment, every, every character, every scene. Everything about the show, I was eating up. I was eating it up. I mean, maybe I'm a little more hungry because I haven't really been that into uh, For All Mankind and The Morning Show, which I feel are two shows that were rushed right out of the gate. And this show feels like uh, it took its time and they really crafted it. I think it's it's based off of a book. So, you know, once you get it based off a book, um, you, you get to kind of... Um, it's almost like a, a rewritten or a revision or something like that. Like if, if it's, there's some source material, it seems like it's less rushed because uh, some of the things were kind of already written and you can sort of uh, hone in and craft uh, the story uh, a little more. You know, I don't know if I'm saying that well. Maybe I should have written a book about the script to the, this review here so it'd be a little more rewritten. But anyway, I got my show notes here. I got a lot of things to talk about. I'm a big fan of murder mystery drama and um, characterizations of people wrongly imprisoned and, you know, shows like Making a Murderer and the podcast Serial are, are fascinating things that, you know, that I gravitate towards. So um, the truth be told, I'm just I'm just so relieved and I'm so refreshed that uh, this is a show that I can get behind. I'm excited. And um, in a way, I kind of wish that Apple TV didn't drop three episodes at once, because these episodes are a little longer, they're close to an hour, and I, I want to actually enjoy the experience longer and like, f not really forcing my way, but pushing my way through watching three episodes so I can kind of sort of do a review. I felt like I kind of cheated myself a little bit of the enjoyment. So Apple TV, if you guys are watching, if you're listening, we know that you want to push out these three episodes at once, but do them one episode at a time. Let's go back to serializing the shows one episode at a time, let's get everybody talking and, um, you know, go, go with that. You know, forget, forget, trial and error is now over on Apple TV+. Plus. Um, Dickinson, I don't know if that worked, all dropping it down trying to binge because everybody kind of either forgot about it or never watched it or just didn't even know it existed. But, uh, you know, now we, now we know what your shows can be good. So one episode at a time. So with that out of the way, let's talk some spoilers. Let's get into spoilers right now and talk specifically about things in episodes one, two, and three. And again, I've got a ton of notes over here, so forgive me if I'm kind of going through things quickly. There's a lot to cover, but we start off, episode one is called Monster, and it's aptly named. Every episode was kind of aptly named. I was just like, wow, they're really getting to like the heart of things with these names and right directly into, into the meat of things here. So we meet our main character, Poppy, and she's telling her husband about Warren's case and the specifics years ago and how Poppy's article helped shape the narrative against him and actually might have helped him get put in jail or at least get trialed as and tried in as an adult. And that's a, that's a big deal. Uh, Poppy's career, we find out that Poppy's career actually broke and, and broke out due to the articles about Warren's cases. And she even sort of um, hints that she might have looked the other way a little bit to help dramatize the original case. So Poppy's got some skeletons in the closet that she needs to address here, some things that have maybe have been haunting her over the years. Uh, we get some more exposition with uh, Poppy and she starts out her podcast and she's running through all the evidence of Warren Cave's case and the murder of Chuck Berman, Lainey's father. There's a lot of characters we need meet and we, we find out about, we, we find out multiple things. We find out who they are, then we kind of meet them and we find out their kind of um, side of things. And then a little bit of the truth, a little bit of the false. There's, there's, there's different narratives and different storytelling here. And the podcast, the way it unfolds, it's kind of cool because it's almost like having a narrator in the show. And, and I didn't think it was annoying. I actually thought the way they did it was pretty clever. By the way, if you hear some noises and knocking, my neighbors are 
renovating their kitchen over there. So apologies in advance for hammering and knocking and stuff like that. So, all right, so we find out the details of the case. Um, and this is, you know, very important because I'm assuming we're going to reference this stuff a lot. No witnesses, no weapon found, no DNA. Only Chuck's daughter is the one who testifies. And uh, the only other thing is Warren's prints are around the house near the body. So those are kind of like the... Um, the facts, just the facts, man, right? Well, I wrote down here, great scene with Poppy and Warren's mom outside of the trash bin. And this is kind of the first really great dramatic scene where they're sort of talking, Poppy's reaching out. She's like, hey, I want to interview Warren. And what I like about this show that it's doing different than some of these other Apple TV shows is we actually get a scene where um, it's difficult. There's like three acts structure within the scene where there's like a difficult thing that the character wants and she, she he or she can't get it right away. And then there's a little bit of a turning point and they're able to kind of make it happen or, or not make it happen. And they have to kind of revisit the character or that scene later on in the story so they can kind of overcome this. Whereas like for all mankind and, and the morning show, they just, there's just like arguments and yelling or something's happening and then boom, it's over montage. And uh, I'm, I'm happy the truth be told is letting things kind of ride out, but things have kind of a pace. Uh, that's kind of a word I use a lot when I'm describing these shows. So. Uh, there's a funny line when um, they're uh, leaving church and Poppy and her dad and her family and stuff. And um, Poppy's like, I got to go. I got I got to do something. And Poppy's sister is like, where, where are you going? It's, it's not like you have a real job or anything referencing being inside of a podcast. So I got to chuckle from that being like a partial YouTuber, a moonlighting YouTuber, you know, that people don't consider being a YouTuber, a tw Twitch streamer or a podcaster a job. So I thought that was funny. Um, so moving on, Poppy visits Warren Cave in San Quentin. We get to see that he is now, uh, I got Nazi tattoos and shaved head. Aaron Paul is playing Warren Cave. He's actually doing a great job here. I loved Breaking Bad and um, not really, haven't really been following Aaron Paul's career outside of Breaking Bad, but boom, this show, he's he's got it. He's the man and doing a, doing a good job right there. So, so Poppy catches a reality check with the uh, Nazi tattoos, and she's actually, boom, I'm 86, I'm out of here, I can't deal with this, this is too much reality for me, and it, it, I never thought that the show would sort of take this turn, I mean, everything that happens, there's some sort of dramatic conflict happening, it's, just, it's like two two trains going, you know, straight, straight ahead locomotions, and we're gonna see, like, if they clash, if they veer off and turn, and I'm loving it, I'm loving it. So Poppy gets her podcast going, and uh, looks like we've got two months to maybe get worn out of jail before the mom passes away from cancer and all that. So that's that's kind of the episode one, and boom, we set up pretty much the the scenario, the the characters, everything. So now it's on to episode two, which is called Black People in the Neighborhood. Poppy goes full on detective mode here. She's uh, ready to get everybody involved. She calls in Marcus, one of her old lovers and a ex cop who's who's can help out kind of spy on people and uh marcus is tracking laney and her aunt and he actually sees a big moment here where they get into a car accident and marcus jacks laney's aunt's phone susan and then with the help of the phone poppy is able to figure out that josie has actually been hiding out in new york city she gives a ring leaves a voicemail eventually she winds up flying to new york and tracking her down there's a little bit of a subway chase we're outside, we're in, we're in San Francisco, we're in New York, we're in different areas, unlike a Servant, where the whole show seems to be taking place inside the house. Uh, this show is getting around. It's, it's flashbacks and present tense, and, and I love it. It's all over the place. And uh, we're really starting to line up some of the suspects of the show. So I wrote down the suspects here from the first couple episodes, and you'll have to let me know in the comments below who, who you think done it, who done it, who the suspects are, who you're leaning towards. So first up, we got Warren's dad, who actually testified against Warren and is a cop, and then we actually find out a little later that his uh, wife was actually having an affair with Chuck, so that gives him some motive. So he's a, he's a heavy, heavy target to lean on here. Also, I wrote down Chuck's wife, who actually found the body, appears to be stabbed to death, without any witnesses, so it could be Chuck's wife. Josie could be uh, a person of interest also. She never testified, she went into hiding after the trial. Even Lainey, Lainey could be a suspect as well. You know, I mean, everybody could be a suspect. And also Warren technically could be a suspect, although, you know, he's already convicted. So I don't know if you put him on the suspect list. We're trying to, we're trying to prove that he didn't do it by finding other suspects to pin it on. So uh, 
Yes, there is an interesting spin in this episode when the Nazi, uh, Warren's Nazi friends, leaders come up and visit him. And they're like, hey, what, what was that black woman doing visiting you? And uh, this puts a little extra pressure on Warren. He's inside, he's in jail, he's in prison. There's rules, there's limitations. He can't just uh, be, call himself a Nazi and have a black woman come visit him in prison. So the big twist at the end here is that uh, Josie actually calls Lainey and they reconnect briefly over the phone. But Josie says to Lainey, hey, I'm not going to see you again. I'm terrified of you. And um, we, we see that there's a rift between the two sisters here. And, and, and then, of course, there's a mini twist. And then there's the big twist at the end. Just when you think the episode is going to end, my man Warren gets shanked in jail and then stabbed a few times during a little prison, fake prison outbreak or something like that. And that's an intense cliffhanger. He's basically lying on the floor, bleeding out. And OMG, if it, again, referencing what I said earlier, if only these were drawn out week to week, that would that probably would have been a trending moment, uh, Aaron Paul or Warren Cave or something like that. But the fact that they kind of threw these out three episodes at a time, I feel like some of these big cliffhangers get a little bit lost in the shuffle. And, and you know, I'm enjoying the show, but, you know, Apple TV, come on, milk it. All right, let's get on to uh, episode three, which is called Even Salt. Looks like sugar, or they also reference it as uh, Akada and the uh, the description of the episode there. So a lot of stuff going on here. We uh, we we we. I had to Google first of all. People are saying AB a lot, and and I don't use AB ass backwards in my dictionary. I think that's I got, had to Google this in Urban Dictionary this, but uh, it was kind of funny that everybody's using yo that's AB and AB this and AB that. And I was like, you know, I'm a former New Yorker. I don't I don't remember ever saying AB. Maybe that's kind of a newer slang thing you have to let me know in the comments below do you do you text that out to your to your peeps when you're when you're talking so yeah just wrapping it up a lot of great things going on here i wrote down if there was a complaint there's a, a little bit too much of poppy and marcus having phone conversations talking on their iphones and communicating and i feel like um maybe that's a complaint while i don't hate it i hope that maybe in the upcoming episodes I actually meet for coffee or or something or brunch or just at a bus stop, or in their cars, or something like that, talking to each other, uh, car to car, or something like that, because uh, I'm just getting a little tired of the phone conversations back and forth, and maybe it's just because, I mean, I have an iPhone, I'm an Apple person, but maybe it's just seeing, like, the iPhones too much that uh, it's, it started going in my head. It's like, okay, let's let's hide that product placement, Apple TV. Uh, the show is just great overall, great, pas uh, great passion, pacing, uh, writing, acting, there's a lot of loose ends that are going to need tying up as we go. And if you're watching this, if you stayed to the end, thank you very much. I know this is probably the longest video I've done on these Apple TV shows, but I had a lot to talk about, a lot of things to get on my chest. And it's a, it's a murder mystery. It's a whodunit. I'm into it. I need to know who you thought did it or thinks they're going to, you know, who the red herring's going to be. Uh, let me know in the comments below and we'll see what happens next week as we get to uh, episode four. And if you guys are brand new, please subscribe and comment and like favorite bell icon i gotta say these things because you know youtube don't work anymore so i have to say these things so thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time